Well, after being drip-fed these songs in conjunction with the lunar calendar, the album is finally here. Let's get into it, shall we? Gabriel's 10th studio album has been slowly revealed to us. A bit like the moon coming out from behind a cloud in many respects. And like other great works, uh, like the Beach Boys Smile, for example, it's one that's prodded at our patience. Like a hill we must climb, Gabriel might sing. I actually read somewhere that this album was scheduled for release in 2004, which was only a couple of years after the upper album. But it's um, been somewhat sidelined, shall we say. Instead, we've had to content ourselves with numerous other Gabriel offerings, including collections of cover versions and his own songs re-recorded with an orchestra, a film soundtrack or two, the collaborative work Big Blue Ball, three live albums and two compilations. He's been a busy chap, that's for sure. But this album feels like a manifesto for life, uh, the organic reality of life juxtaposed with technological advancement. Interesting, Rolling Stone writes, uh, Gabriel in wizard beard and sci-fi tunic, he's come to encapsulate in sound and mindset the organic mysticism of seemingly magical new technologies. And with this album, we've seen a sporadic release of the songs contained thereon, like a sporadic morsel dropped from a vast prog table every full moon, in fact. And it renders the release of this album, like the moon, something of universal significance, something timeless. That, although remote, directs life on Earth to a certain extent. And Panopticon was the first wonderful number to be released. There were two mixes, of course. There was the Mark Spike Stent mix and the Chad Blake mix. I will critique both the both mixes of this album side by side. That will be a video that will be coming real soon, so do watch out for that. And this, of course, features Brian Eno and bass legend Tony Levin. The bass on this album is worth the price of admission alone, to be honest with you. It lends the album a deep, cellular shudder and pulse. Those low, segmented frequencies are almost hypnotic. Interestingly, the independent writes, Above the primal vibrations soared the soulful greys of his voice, smart, cynical and soulful, jettisoning some of the proggy pretensions of his early Genesis days, of which I'm still a fan, without betraying their questing spirit. Some absolutely superb musicianship on this album, which delicately embellishes these songs. Little flourishes that thread and wind themselves through each number. An album that seems about interconnectedness and at the same time a kind of remoteness uh, suggested in songs like Panopticon and The Court. The album, in part, uh, there's some places where it seems to come across as a meditation on life or the end of organic life. A subject I suppose Gabriel has every right to mull over given his age. It sees him haunted by the passing of a generation and the merciless passing of time like the rising and falling of the sun or the, or the moon in fact. Emerging, marking another day over, even Gabriel more aware of his own encroaching mortality. Trapped in a body and to quote, stiffens, tires and aches in, in its wrinkled and blotchy skin. Interesting how our earthly body deteriorates under the gaze of a heavenly body. He seems very much a, a man resigned, and I love the lyric, the young move to the centre on playing for time, this endless procession, uh, this endless procession to the grave, uh, Charles Dickens writes in A Christmas Carol. Now there's a seasonal book for you. But I think Gabriel portrays himself as very much a man at peace with his place in the cosmic scheme of things. Interestingly, the, the poet Philip Larkin wrote, Waking at four to soundless dark, I stare, in time the curtain edges will grow light. Till then I see what's really always there, unresting death. A whole day nearer now, making all thought impossible, but how and where and when I shall myself die. But unlike Larkin, there doesn't seem to be this existential terror, just this calm, meditative acceptance. There are songs that spotlight uh, current events, of course, Four Kinds of Horses, uh, critique of religious fundamentalism, and perhaps the rise of political populism as well. I love the line in this song. O oh, mother illusion with your jacket of flames, your face, it is everywhere, such a dark, dark shade of fame. And the court explores the effect of the internet on public discourse. Again, wonderful line in that one. We lost the line between the good and bad. We lost the line between the sane and the mad. I love the way this song employs its mechanised rhythms, which is very reminiscent of um, 1982's fourth album. 
and it adds a choir where ironically there is no salvation as we're all subject to the warped justice of cancel culture. And Gabriel purrs his discontent in an accusatory whisper. The aforementioned panopticon um, is a kind of a critique of surveillance culture, kind of a state voyeurism, if you will. Helen Brown in her wonderful article, and I'm quoting, she says the song recalls 1992's Digging in the Dirt. But while the latter explored the painful growth of introspection, I'm digging in the dirt to find the places I got hurt. This new track encourages listeners to flip the gaze on those in power and call them to account. Many of the numbers uh, in some way are dedicated to the kind of interconnectivity of uh, organic life. I think he says in one song, I'm connected to the octopus sucker and I'm connected to this, that and the other. It's all images from the natural world that he's part of. And of course, the moon is a powerful and potent symbol. Uh, I think it was Paul Simon that wrote on his Hearts and Bones album, if you're going to write a song about the heart, think about the moon before you start. Road to Joy blends at synth chords with harp as he critiques the blood flowing around the, the body of uh, somebody in a coma. I often wonder if the person in a coma is somehow analogous with us. A little bit reminiscent perhaps of the Pete Townsend's deaf, dumb and blind boy. A symbol of uh, society's spiritual mutism. Olive Tree is one of my favourites on here as he imagines himself donning a virtual reality headset, enabling him to engage with the natural world. He sings beautifully. We lost all connection to the place from which we'd grown, but here in this helmet I can read other minds and scan all the thinking, all the juices I can find. It's interesting that one has to resort to technology to connect with something that is the converse of, really, the natural world. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Joni Mitchell's uh, Tree Museum. Playing for time is one of those beautiful mortality numbers uh, symbolised by the funeral march delicately and somberly chimed out on the piano. I love the way he sings, oh there's a hill we must climb, climb towards the mist of time, evoking the childhood memory referenced in 1977's Salisbury Hill. This doesn't feel like an album that's been gestating all these years, it feels remarkably fresh as these songs dip their toes into the pools of Gabriel's long-standing preoccupations. And I have it on good authority that the performances in the live arena of this new material was Pretty stunning. The tour that accompanied the gradual release of IO's tracks online, well, those of us who could afford to sell a kidney to get along to them, of course, Gabriel performed his new material alongside those anthemic numbers from 1986's So, melding the intimate intricacy of these songs and set them against the 1980s brashness of those numbers, punctuated with horns and other such affectations. On this album, I adore the bright-hued olive tree and the grandeur of uh, the title track, not to mention the almost serpentine rhythms of This Is Home. Gone are what the uh, Guardian describes as the rain-splattered, very English melancholy of those early Genesis albums to a more ambient Eno-esque textures. Despite the lunar-influenced drip-fed release of this album, it feels like a coherent whole, and very much like the tides beneath the cycles of the moon, it ebbs and flows beautifully. Anyway, I'd love to know what you think of this album. Please leave your comments below. I shall leave you with my closing salvo, which is, as you know, hope you're well, staying safe, and more importantly, you keep listening.